And I am beyond my wit's end with this thing. I've been trying to get this overdrive on the transmission since yesterday. Yesterday morning, I started trying to put this thing on. And for the life of me, I cannot get this overdrive to go past this point. Uh, got my front bolted down right here. I mean, it's, it's stout. It's not going anywhere. Um, I do have a mount made right there, but I don't really have a way to, you know, do anything much with it at the moment. I guess I could, uh, unbolt it from the transmission, bolt it down to the table, and then rebolt it to the transmission after I apply tension to my belt, which is the whole reason why I've got that string right there for I kind of expected it, but I was hoping for the best. But um, came out here just now, and my uh, trans is leaking. Got a little bit right there. You can see it dripping. And then you got a little bit right there. You can't really see it that well. Uh, a little bit. It ain't dripping, but it's close. See? So, there's that wreck. Um, I kind of expected it, but... It's all good. Uh, doing this is relatively easy up here. Back here is going to suck because I have to undo all that all over again. So um, that's going to be fun. But anyway, so I got that to look forward to. Um, uh, have bell housing, have bell housing gasket. I thought it was intermediate section, which goes on the back back there. But um, that's not the case. It is the bell housing gasket. So once I get my intermediate section gasket in, um, I have to do recalculate all my shims and everything. Um, with the way it looks now, I may have done my shim calculation wrong the first time that I put this thing together. Uh, we'll see. I'd really hate to put this thing together and it still be out of whack and whatnot with the serum calculation, but we'll see. Uh, I'm kind of tired of dealing with it, to be honest, but it is what it is. I ain't going to stop until this thing gets back on the road, hands down. So there's that. Got new gaskets right here, right there. My input shaft and output shaft play is set. Can't really see it that well because of my thingamajig right here. But I got it. Kind of see it right there. Beautiful. Front is the same. I don't have everything tightened down 100%. About two pounds under uh, the lowest it can be. That way... The gaskets aren't compressed all the way in case I have to take something back apart. But even after I tighten them back down, it ain't going to affect uh, my play that much. So maybe I can finally move on. What's going on, y'all? Out here in the shop. Looking at the transmission setup again. I got my new setup done. It's on there. Hopefully it stays. We'll see. <laughs> um, but, I mean, everything's bolted in place and whatnot. It, it's pretty stout. It ain't going anywhere. It's leaking. Sure enough, you can see a little bit right there on the table. And a little bit. A little drip right there. You can see where it's running down at, of course. Um... I wanted to run some extra RTV, a little bit of sealant around this and on the backside, quite frankly, back here where this meets up here. But the, recommend, the, the manufacturer did not recommend it. So I left it alone. And, well, I ain't got no choice now but to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to be doing that soon. And whenever I take the bell housing off and I separate these two again after I drain all this crap again, um, I'm going to look at, flat, look at the flatness. I don't have a really good way to do it, but I'm going to look at the flatness on the surfaces 
see if I can see any gaps. So that's the next setback. Got to take care of it. Thanks for watching. Uh, oh, I seen two spots. This uh, drain plug was leaking, so I cleaned it up real quick, uh, cleaned it all up and whatnot. And whenever I tightened down my service door from my overdrive right here, I tightened down with a bunch of overdrive with a bunch of fluid on it. So it looks like it uh, all that it got pushed on out. So I wiped it back down, and I'll check it on check it again tomorrow. Uh, at the moment, though, I'm not too worried. What's going on YouTube? Thanks for taking the time out to watch the channel. I haven't updated this thing in a while since I did the um, overdrive uh, rebuild on it. So I wanted to give a quick update and whatnot, maybe a couple of pointers to anybody working on this because it took me a little bit to figure out what was going on um, when I was trying to get the transmission back in. Got the transmission back in today. I've been working on this thing since November of last year. So you do the math on however many months or whatever that is. It's, it's, it's a lot more than I anticipated. Um, I kept on running into bearing issues, kept running into leakage issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, with that being said, today I got it back in. I need to double check my bolts and stuff like that for the bail housing and reinstall my starter, which is you can see where it's supposed to go right there. You know. Um, so with that said. I was having issues with it with the transmission going back in and I got thinking like, what in the world is going on with this thing I it came out relatively easy it should go back in easy right well it ain't going easy is not going to happen when you've got 30 something year old um um motor mounts that are shot so basically even though I was supporting it a little bit underneath, I guess I wasn't supporting it enough. My motor mounts, which you can see one a little bit, eh, yeah, you can see it right there at the nut. Yep, that's it right there. Um, the motor mounts have gotten so bad from age and whatnot, oil and other all this other BS, you know, that comes with having a car like a car like this, any car, not just a car like this, any car. Um, they had deteriorated, which had allowed the back end of the motor to drop down and slide back so what that was what was going on with that was because it was sitting so much further back than it was supposed to there's a little radius looking thing on the on the uh bell housing it's on the back side you can kind of see it a little bit like right yeah where my finger at right eh, it's gonna crap okay never mind but it it's on the bell housing and it's a pain to get the motor has to be right per according to the Haynes manual it takes a, it, you're supposed to have your distributor crap I got this thing zoomed in sorry you're supposed to have your distributor about 400 thousandths away from the firewall and I got to thinking well if the motor mounts a shot making it set for the back I need to change them out which I did I already I, 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 I ordered some already in anticipation so I broke out bit my big red thingamajig over here and I hoisted it on up and went ahead and replaced them. That being said, I were, once I got done replacing them and whatnot, I kept on I kept the, the more the motor on the big red thing over there. That way it'll have some kind of some some sort of support because there's nothing underneath it other than those two rubber mounts. There's nothing on the back side of it. So I basically lowered it back down far enough to get it to get the transmission on on the back side um while the mounts basically kept it far enough forward where i didn't have to worry about anything um 
So with it being brought further forward, I was able to get past the little radius thing that covers up the starter gear that is on the bell housing. And um, I was actually able to get the transmission on. It took me a few hours this morning, but I got it and you can see it right there. You know what an M46 looks like, so that's it. It took a lot of work, but I'm hoping that this little video will help somebody out that's working on one of these cars, you know, be like, hey, I can't get this thing to go back. I can't get the transmission to go back in, you know, check your motor mounts. Make sure your motor mounts are not sagging. Make sure they're in good shape because having your engine far enough forward to be able to clear that little radius deal on the bell housing that covers up the starter gear, that, that, is, that is of the utmost importance. If this thing is not far enough back, that area of the bell housing will hit the transmission tunnel. There, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. And trust me, I tried. <laughs> so anyway, that's the update for my YouTube channel. Uh, next project on it, I'm gonna be doing is the exhaust. You can see right there I'm working with. Got the down, got the down pipe rebolted. It's ready to go. Everything is set. Everything is tight. So I'll be able to work on the uh, on my exhaust now and get a good route on it. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. All this is, I'm sure is common knowledge, but this is my first time ever doing anything like this. Excuse me. So with that being said, I wanted to pass along my newfound knowledge to somebody else, thinking like, hey. Maybe somebody else has had this trouble or somebody is having this trouble. And this is what to do. If your transmission does not go back in, check your motor mounts. Check your motor mounts. So that's all for now, y'all, until I decide to do something else different with the car. Um, I don't know how much more I'm going to be doing. My little wannabe 740 up there. <laughs> um, until I decide to do something else with the channel, this is probably going to be the last video for a little bit. Um, daggone exhaust videos are all over the internet so I don't really see a point in doing anything with that so anyway uh, thank you for watching hopefully this helps somebody out uh, like subscribe if you want I don't really do a whole lot with this channel but maybe this right here will help out somebody so until the next time guys take it easy